the most severe infection. We think probably 10% or less of all infections in China are being detected at the current time. The next tier down is really what's being detected overseas. We, there we think sensitivity is, is somewhat higher, but still we may be only detecting maybe a quarter of all infections at that level. Um, lots of people will be entering, the, the borders are porous, countries won't be detecting every case coming in. Right. Would you be able to say anything about forward projections of where the outbreak, current outbreak is going? Well, in terms of where we think the current outbreak has got to in terms of scale, we estimate that maybe up to you know, 50,000 new infections a day occurring in China, which is obviously much larger than the official case numbers. So, I mean, it's going up all the time. So the forward projections um, depend really on the effectiveness of control measures. We think the epidemic is roughly doubling in size about every five days at the current time. It's hard to evaluate how effective controls are, but there's limited evidence of it slowing in, in China. Um, under that scenario, the epidemic would really follow a natural course, probably peak in its epicenter, Wuhan, in around a month's time. Some uncertainty around that, and then maybe a month or two later in the whole of China. The rest of the world will see epidemics at various times after that, depending on how well connected they are, have been in, in the last few weeks, and the travellers have come to them who are infected from, from China itself. As to the overall effectiveness of control measures, it's hard to evaluate. If there's a lot of community transmission going on, which it probably is, it will be very hard to control this epidemic in the same way as, for instance, we controlled the SARS epidemic um, some 15, 20 years ago. Would you be able to explain how the mathematical modeling that your team is doing can inform policy and uh, government response? 